Hello, and welcome back to our series of tutorials on Renderman Studio from Maya. I've been away for a couple of weeks, I've been overseas and working on other projects, but I'm back now and looking forward to doing quite a few new things with Renderman, hopefully to help you understand what's going on with the new system. So, while I was away, um, I decided it would be actually useful if people could use the same files that I'm working on, and one of the easiest ways which we can do this is by using the files which Pixar themselves supply. So, if you want to actually get hold of these files, they're available from the Pixar site. And the first one we're going to be working with is the Renderman Walking Teapot, which is always a favourite with people at SIGGRAPH and collectors around the world. Really nice, interesting object, and goes back to the UTAD Teapot, which is, again, one of the... Um, one of the most important objects in computer graphics. It demonstrates that we can actually render things which have nice curved surfaces and do all kinds of cool things with them. Let's see where it comes from first of all. Let's see how we can get our hands on this. So you can work along with me. So if we just go to the Render Man toolbar in Maya and go to the Help function. Help is bringing up... Let me just bring it over here. Brings up Internet Explorer and hooks us up directly to the live help files at Pixar. That way it'll always be updated for you. So just do a search for tutorial. Actually should have gone for tutorials. Pluralize it about the tutorials. Okay. So this gives us a link here to where they are. So software download area. Okay, we can see this. And it'll be Random Man Studio 4.0. Okay. Go to next there. And here we have both executables and tutorial files in various different flavors for various different operating systems. I highly advise you to find the um, the version which relates to your personal version. Download them and install them. Now I'll show you where I put mine now in a second. I'll just close this down. So I put mine into, I'm going to show you through my setting project. I've saved mine onto my D drive. I generally keep my C drive clear for um, actually installed software. And the D drive is where I have most of my project work. So big render man project folder and Pixar's tutorials because I have some more tutorials which I'm going to be putting in here and filling in some more information later. So Pixar's tutorials and set that as the project directory. That's just where I set mine. You can put yours wherever you like. So when we do that, I can then go and file, open scene, and it will be in the scenes directory. I have some issue with my mouse. There we go and it will be the teapot and box. Okay, when I open it, don't save. I get an error warning, but it's nothing I should be worried about. And this is the scene which I get. Okay, so this scene, literally out of the box, um, pun intended, will render straight off with Renderman, so long as Renderman has been loaded. So let's just do a quick render on this. Um, my default image viewer is set to image tool, to it. So this is what we're getting. It's a reasonable render. It looks a bit washed out to my, my liking, but we've got a render and some stuff happening here. So let's just set this to always on top, so we'll actually keep this in view. Now, all of the materials and all the lights here are basically my materials and lights. So if I have a look at the objects here, we have a look. This material will be set. Some ramp shaders. This material will be set to. It's a blin shader, okay. This material for the ground will be set also to a blin. So these are basic Maya materials. If I have a look at the lights which are in the scene, and I just go to A so I can see everything. Okay, these are basic Maya lights. Okay, so they do work with Renderman. Um, but if we want to be physically plausible, we can actually improve on these dramatically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put in a 
a floor plane which will have the physically plausible matte material. To do this, let's just go to our ground plane here, check on our color. Having checked on it, it'll actually keep it to our swatch, which is nice, we want that. Have the floor plane selected. Apply the green apple, which is a great matte material. Okay. Green non-shiny material. Go to surface color here. The first color of my selection will be the previous color of it. Now, if I go to render this, just using try re-render from the it window, we still get an effect. Not quite the same as it was before. We have a look. Um, I'll just raise all windows here. Windows and raise all. So you see there is a slight difference between the two because they do actually react differently. Now, that having been said, we want to go fully physically plausible. So the first thing which I'm actually going to work on here is I'm going to actually work on the lights. The lights which currently are spotlights, spotlight shapes. I'm going to actually work on replacing these with the Renderman RMS area lights. So I'm thinking this light here is probably the major light at the moment. Intensity is 330, intensity is 200, intensity is 300, it's quite close. That's probably just picking up some specular highlights. So I'm going to have to make two reasonably large lights, one for back and fill, one for front, and one smaller one possibly for highlights. So let's put in a standard area light. And we'll see just down here, it's hard to spot. It is actually here. I'm going to scale this up. So using the R button to scale, shortcut key, scale it up reasonably large, not the same size as the teapot. That's OK. Now I'm going to want to actually replace these other lights with this light. So there is a functionality built into Maya which allows us to replace objects. It's replace objects means I can select an object and the last object I've selected is the one which is going to replace the first object. Okay. Now rather than actually going back to modify panel here all the time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shortcut keys from Maya to actually drop it into my render man toolbar here. So if I go to replace objects and I have control and shift held down and left click, I get replace objects now becomes an active icon here. So what I need to do, select the light I'm going to replace, select where I'm going to replace it with using shift select, and I selected the wrong object. Here's the light, here's what I'm replacing it with, and let's replace object. And you can see it's actually replaced the object here. I can do similarly, or actually what I'll do is I'll scale this to start with. It's probably a little bit small to start with. Make it slightly bigger, okay. Select this light, select the random man light, and I can replace the object. And again, I'll probably scale that a bit. And let's zoom in here, see what's going on. Okay, so in this case, we'll be working with this tiny light here, and our random man light, and we'll replace the object. Okay. So quite possibly, the intensity of these is not high enough. I'm guessing that what I'm working on here, so I'm going to make that 3, I'm going to make this 3. So that's the main light down here, OK? That's going to be 3. The back light here is 3. And this light here for specular highlights, I'm going to make it at 2. Now I've just hit the 6 button in here, so I can actually see what's happening. OK, so it's shade textured. Again, if we go to five, four, five, six, so we're just seeing what's happening here. So we can actually see what is going on. Now I'm just going to try re rendering this. And we'll see we get some kind of a rendering. Okay, we can see the ground plane. 
we can see the silhouette of the objects, but we can't actually see the objects themselves because they don't have physically plausible shaders on them. So let's just put some very simple, basic, physical plausible, plausible shaders on all of them, and we'll get back around to actually working through putting the correct shaders on them. I'll work just starting from the teapot. Now the teapot currently is a subdiv surface. I'd like to actually convert it to a polygonal surface. It's just my personal preference and it'll be helpful to me in a bit when I'm actually unwrapping it. It's just I prefer that I come from the game's background. So modify, convert, uh, subdiv to polygons. So we get a nice smooth mesh. I'll do the same with the feet. And just use the G key in Maya to do the last command. We all know the G key, it's lovely. And the same with the, the lid. Okay, so let's have a look and see what's going on here. A whole bunch of shaders, not particularly interested in what they're gonna be. I'm just gonna select the object and I'm gonna put a general purpose shader on it. Okay, so it's the red apple. RMS GP surface. Okay, so select the object and we'll see that that has replaced all the other shaders. And I'll re-render. And we'll see, hey presto, we're actually getting a nice looking teapot. Okay, nice-ish. Let's put a similar material onto, actually we can put the same material onto it. So I'll just right click, assign existing material and GP surface one, that'll do. Okay, for the feet, I'll put a different one on with a darker. Um, so I'll put a new material. I'll just, oops, I'll put a new material here. I'll just make the surface color darker. Um, about that shade of gray. Okay. So it'll be GP surface two, I'll just rename it feet. Select the other foot. Right click. Sign existing material. Oops. Sign existing material. Feet. Now let's see what our render looks like. Right click and re render. Okay. Not bad. Let's just make sure that we have that material on this. No, we don't actually, so let's just assign material, existing material, feet, re-render it. Okay. So there's our teapot looking reasonable. Still lots of work to be done to it. Let's see how we're going for time now. Okay, um, so what I'll do now is we'll just have a look very, very quickly at setting up some materials for the box. Now the box itself is made out of a number of NURBS patches. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, I've been scaling it up. My bad. Okay, so what I'll do again is I'll actually use general purpose material, which is a fantastic material to use for most things, and I'll assign it to this box, to each of the sections. So I'll go to a new general purpose material, okay, and the surface color that currently is set to white. Let's go to an input, and what I can actually do in this case is if I just go to open my hypershade window, Hypershade is here. Got some textures in the scene. So that was, I think it was this one. Can't quite remember. Let's just drag and drop. See how it goes. Okay. Let's have a look at the material itself and let's turn off pre filtering and let's make sure we have. Um, Gotta make sure we've got the right gamma for it. So the profile for this should be, it is coming in linear. We'll look at setting up linear light flow in a bit. And let's just see how this looks. There we 
there we go we're actually looking correct and actually it shouldn't be linear it should be srgb that's why it's coming through too dark or too light srgb re-render this we'll get a much better saturation this time that's much nicer so much prefer that okay so I'm just going to call a halt here for a second. We'll come back in a couple of moments and we'll have a look at setting up some of the other materials for the top, left side, etc.